All right, all right, all right. I think this is working. I think this is working. And I think we're going to have a good time here. I think we're ready to get started here, okay? So, look, I'm going to go ahead and continue where we left off. I wanted to practice some more problems that had to do with the order of operations and working backwards, all right? So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Let me go in and bust out my snipping tool, and we'll go ahead and continue where we left off, okay? For sure, for sure, I wanted to hit a problem like number 14, 15, and so forth, okay? So let's go ahead and start with um, 14, and then we're probably going to go hit it straight up to uh, 16, but let's go ahead and see what we got here, okay? So Let's go ahead and scroll down. Boom, we got 14 right here. Let me go ahead and scroll down. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Right? Let me make it a little bit bigger so we can all see it, right? Make sure we can understand the problem, okay? We got ourselves number 14 here, okay? We got ourselves R plus 13 divided by 12 equals to 1, okay? We need to solve this. We need to work backwards. We are going to use the order of operations. We're going to use... Gemdas, okay? We're going to use Gemdas, all right? Yeah, and remember, I talked about this. PEMDAS is for parentheses, right? And, you know, that's what we use in the junior highs, you know, before we get to high school and stuff. But Gemdas, it stands for the grouping symbols, okay? Grouping symbols, and here's the deal. I know there's not one. We don't visually see it here, here but there's an invisible little grouping symbol already here in this problem. In our numerator... We got a little grouping symbol up here, okay? Because, you know, we would have to do the numerator first if we were working forwards. So the reason I bring this up is because when we start working backwards, remember, we're going to draw a straight line down from the equal sign. Okay, I'll try to draw it straight. <laughs> but I hope you could see that in this problem, I know, look, immediately we start from the bottom and work our way up. That's what we're supposed to do here, okay? But see, here's the problem we got is that you see an add or subtract. There is one. I mean, somebody could say, hey, what about that? And I would say, yeah, you're right. But that's not an add or subtract outside of a grouping symbol. We would not start there, okay? Technically, the first thing we're going to undo is the divide by 12. Remember, I'm going to read the equation one more time just so you could understand the steps. We start with R, and then we add 13 to R, and then we divide by 12, okay? So the first thing technically we're going to undo was the divide by 12. And the opposite of dividing by 12, and you know what? I'm just going to recopy this. I'm going to copy it down here because it's easier for me to uh, work with, you know, when I have it like this. The opposite of dividing by 12 would be multiplying by 12, okay? But whatever we do on one side, we got to do to the other side, okay? Okay. Notice, in this problem, once we multiply by 12, these 12s will cancel each other out. They're gone. They're gone from this. Because, well, you know, we don't need them anymore. It's done. It's done. So we continue by bringing the left side of the equation down. We have R plus 13, equal sign in the middle. Right side of the equation is 1, plus, one times 12. I was going to say 1 plus 12, but I you know, would have done that wrong. It's 1 times 12, and we end up with 12 here, okay? Now we're getting closer. Now we're getting closer to solve by working backwards, okay? Next step here, we have R plus 13. The opposite of plus 13 would be minus 13. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side, Okay. Notice my 13s in this problem, the positive 13 and the negative 13, cancel each other out. That's just how it is. It goes away. So we're left with R on the left side. Now, on the right side of the equation, we have different signs, okay? We have the first number is positive 12, and the second number is negative 13, when we have different signs, we got to find the difference, okay? Notice, 13 is the larger number, so we're going to go ahead and make our answer negative. 13 is larger, that means we have more negatives than positives, okay? Notice, this negative, we have 13 of them, that's why the answer is negative here, okay? That's just how it is. Now we got to subtract, we got to find the difference. 13 minus 12 we get one. 
the ones cancel out. You know, one minus one is none. And so our answer ends up being R equals negative one. Remember, we have more negatives than positives. That's why the answer is negative. I mean, you could see it right here. We only have 12 positives. Notice there's no symbol, but if there's no symbol, you could put an invisible positive there. There's only 12 positives and there's 13 negatives. We have more negatives and we have one more negative. That's why the answer is R equals negative one. Okay. We could do these problems, ladies and gentlemen. The thing is we got to practice and then with more practice, we get better and better. Okay. Look, I'm a big fan of doing fractional type problems, but I'm skipping 15. And I'm going straight to 16 here, okay? And I'm picking 16 because it looks a little bit more complicated than the 14 we just attacked, okay? But you know what? We're still going to be able to do this problem. The order of operation is still going to be something we do here. We're still going to use gamdas, okay? Gamdas. It's just a habit of mine. And I keep throwing it up there because I want everyone to make sure they understand. We're not doing this because it's random. We're not doing this because Mr. Delgado decided to make some steps up. That's not what we're doing. We're doing this because the order of operations goes in every single thing we do in math. The thing is, is that sometimes we either work forwards and sometimes we work backwards. It really depends on the problem, okay? So I got myself 3K minus 7. You know, I'll even say it better. 3 times K minus seven, that will be divided by five, and that will give us the answer of 16, okay? So first steps first, instead of dividing by five, we're gonna multiply both sides by five, okay? We're multiplying both sides by five. Of course, I need to drop the line down, right? I need to drop that down. Man, my straight lines, vertical lines are not that good. <laughs> they, they don't look that good. <laughs> But anyways, when we multiply by 5 and we divide by 5, the 5s on the left side cancel, okay? So let's go ahead and set that up. Boom. 5s on the left side cancel. So we're left with 3K minus 7 on the left side, okay? We're going to have to do some work over here, 16 times 5. Again, I am a big fan of using a four-function calculator, okay? This is what they're used for. They're used for doing basic math, basic computation, and it really helps us out. So on the right side of the equation, we got ourselves 16 times 5 equals 80. And so notice the right side of the equation is now 80, okay? Notice we're just using a basic calculator here. It's just helping us out. But if you don't want to use a calculator, you could surely do the work by hand. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3, 5. Six, seven, eight. And that's why we got the eight right here for 80. Same thing, okay? But we still got to keep it going. We still got to make sure we could do the work correctly, okay? Now my line reads three times K minus seven equals to 80. So the opposite, the next step we're going to cancel out. I mean, maybe you even heard it. The last step was minus seven. So the opposite of negative 7 or minus 7 is plus 7. And you could already see that we're adding 7 to both sides. All right. Whatever you do to one side, we surely do on the other side. Okay. We got ourselves 3K on the left. 80 plus 7 is 87. Okay. We're almost done here. We got one last step. Okay. We got one last step. It says 3 times K equals to 87. So our last step, our inverse operation would be to divide both sides by 3. Okay? Yet again, this does not change. The 3s cancel. The 3s on the side with the variable will cancel. That's what we're undoing here. Okay? That cancels. Well... That purple on, on red looks a little <laughs> vibrant here, okay? It's a little vibrant, okay? Let's do the other side. We got 87 divided by 3, okay? Now, we could do the work by hand if we want to. First things first, how many times does the number 3 go into 8? 3 goes into 8 two times. 3 times 2 is 6. Then we subtract. 8 minus 6 is 2. 
bring down the seven. Now we're going to check how many times does three go into 27 here, okay? Well, three into 27, if we remember our times tables, three times nine is 27, and we end up with a zero, which means there's no remainder, and we're good to go. We ended up with a whole number answer, 29. But of course, if you don't remember division, if you want to check your work, that's what the calculator is for. We could always just do 87 divided by 3 is 29. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Four function calculators really do help us out. So 29 is on the right side, and what's left on the left side is the letter K. And that's how, you know, we work with fractions. That's how we work with these complicated multi-step equations. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, we're going to keep working and hopefully we keep getting better. And, you know, we just keep practicing. All right. Because at the end of the day, practice helps us get perfect. All right. And that's for sure. So anyways, um, you know, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, continue working on this and continue looking at this. And hopefully this makes sense. All right. Have a good one.